And after doing the north half of the Tillinghast Pond loop, we're on the flintlock loop. We're on the north half of that loop. So basically, we, we've done the north half of the Coney Brook loop, the north half of the Tillinghast Pond loop, and the north half of the uh, flintlock loop here. Um, the park literature didn't indicate the extent of the uh, gypsy moth damage on this trail, but this is almost entirely devoid of a canopy. Every tree that you see above you here is dead. And extensive huckleberry and blueberry bushes because of that, because of the full sun. And many white pine trees seeding themselves in. So this will be a pine forest um, and eventually maybe back to oak if the gypsy moths uh, don't return to this area. But in the meantime, this would be very hot in the summertime. This trail here, there's no shade. Fine today, it's not a problem at all today, but if you uh, don't like full sun, um, in the hotter months, this would be a trail to avoid. But you know, there's a lot of educational value in just seeing what can happen when um, animals from other continents end up on a continent where there's no natural predators. The gypsy moths, the emerald ash borer, the Hemlock, woolly, adelgid, and the list goes on. And um, good reason to be extra careful when moving goods from one continent to another. And I'm always amazed what I stumble on, especially when I get off the um, official uh, trail system here. Um, the northern half of that Flintlock trail was mostly devoid of forest canopy because of gypsy moth damage. But um, I was just recording these uh, nice green pitch pines on this Wickaboxit Luke. The Wickaboxit management area is right next to the Tillinghast Pond management area and uh, the trails uh, overlap and we're not going to do the whole four miles of this blue blazed Wickaboxit loop but we're going to do part of it and then take an old road down to Rattlesnake Ledge. Well, I'm stumbling along here filming these um, pitch pine trees and almost walk right by this old foundation so this one was not in the park literature. We're not officially in the uh, Tillinghast Pond Nature Preserve anymore. We're in Wickaboxit Management Area, but this foundation is about 15 feet square. The walls are still quite intact. With no mortar whatsoever, so this predates anything um, after the Civil War. Probably from the 1700s early 1800s and uh, all boulders in here carefully stacked and wedged together and um, a couple trees have collapsed across it here but um, could have been a small house could have been an outbuilding with the foundation underneath but um, interesting to look at and it's not uncommon at all to stumble upon the ruins of these old homesteads in this part of New England the stone walls and of course um, the remains of sawmills and grist mills. And to no surprise of my own, after leaving that small uh, foundation there, it was only maybe 15 foot square. Um, my first indication was that was an outbuilding, but not the main residence of the farm here. And sure enough, my intuition was correct because I didn't have to look too far or even go off the trail to find a much larger foundation here that's still quite intact. And it's amazing what they could build without mortar and without, you know, modern technology. 
This is a really nice foundation here, folks. This thing's probably 25, 30 feet on the back side. And it almost that long on the front side. And mostly, you know, boulders. There's a few, it looks like a quarried piece right there. That longer piece has probably been quarried and moved here from another location. But most of these rocks are what they found within a few hundred yards of this, uh, this location. And um, amazing what they could do with, you know, hand tools, basically. And draft animals as needed. So, um, there are several marked homesteads on this hike, and this is not one of them. And I don't know the name of this, and I don't know the date of it, but based on the technology used to build this foundation, including this old stairwell here, it's not really visible under the leaves, but there is a stairwell right here leading down underground. So, um... You never know what you're going to stumble on. You need to be an archaeologist and a historian and a naturalist to really understand everything you find on these hikes. We'll continue on. Well, I can compliment the Nature Conservancy and the state of Rhode Island for marking all the trails at the Tillinghast Pond Natural Area impeccably you could never lose your way unless you really weren't paying attention uh, once you get into the wicca boxit management area the trails are sometimes marked but not always and i've often done a lot of off trail or unofficial trail hikes for this channel and this is no exception i've been following google maps showing some older roads that are showing up on google maps and then I followed this trail that wasn't on any of the maps, but it, uh, it was an obvious trail that must have gone to something. I was close to what's showing up as Rattlesnake Ledge on the map. I assumed that the trail had to be there for a reason, so I started following it, and about five or ten minutes later, sure enough, we're approaching a natural overlook here. Let's take a look. This is all new to me. I don't know how good the view is. But I can say one thing, there hasn't been much bedrock on this hike, almost none. So if you were a rattlesnake and you wanted to live under a rock for the winter, this would be the place to be right here. And again, there's a lot of places in the Appalachian Mountains and all over the country that are named rattlesnake this and rattlesnake that. And a lot of times the rattlesnakes no longer live there, but the name is still in place. Let's scramble up this and take a look. And we are treated to um, a fairly distant view of the surrounding rolling terrain here. There's no real prominent peaks in this area. Most of this land is between three and 600 feet above sea level. It rolls gently with occasional ledges like this. We can zoom in just a little and see what's way off to our southwest here. And more rolling terrain. Way, way, way off in the distance here. I'm going to have to use my imagination to think that that's Block Island and Block Island Sound. Way, way off in the distance. And um, it certainly could be, and it certainly looks like it, but I can't tell for sure. Let's pause for a minute and look around some more. This is quite an impressive rock uh, outcrop. And the areas with full sun that have always had full sun do get these diminutive little oak trees called um, bear oak, B-E-A-R. I've recorded that on several other clips uh, on this channel and also on my Barking Up the Right Tree channel. This is where it would be found in places with open sun on these ledges and sand plains um, throughout southeast and eastern New England and even down through parts of the central and southern Appalachians. It doesn't go too far, much further south than the Virginia-North Carolina border. There's a couple populations in uh, the area around Winston-Salem, North Carolina. So... Uh, 
kind of reminds me of a hike not too far from here called Mount Misery, which is the same kind of rock and the same kind of view. And that's in the state of Connecticut in the Patchogue State Forest. But the uh, trails from this park extend right into Connecticut. There's an extensive um, trail network in this area that you could hike for days. And many of them are well maintained. Some require a little bit more sense of adventure. Let's explore this even more and then we'll start heading back. And if you continue across Rattlesnake Ledge, there are several trails that come back down and around to the southeast face of this ledge. And, uh, you know, there's a strong north wind blowing today. We've got colder air moving in. And it feels relatively warm down here, out of the wind. And if the sun were out, this would be much warmer than the surrounding land. And, you know, um, I certainly don't go looking for rattlesnakes or any other snakes in their dens when they're coming out in the spring or going in in the fall. I would avoid an area like this, um, especially if I knew I was in rattlesnake country. All the reading I've done is that they no longer are found in this part of New England. There are some in Connecticut, there are some in Massachusetts, but supposedly none in Rhode Island. But if there were some, this is a be a good place for them to spend the winter. There's plenty of cracks in this ledge. They go back many feet. For cold-blooded animals to survive the winter, they have to be able to keep their body temperature above freezing. Um, at least the snakes do. I think toads have other adaptations. But the snakes got to be able to stay above freezing. They usually go way back in these rocks where the constant temperature, um, 45 to 55 degrees, depending on where you are in the Appalachian Mountains, uh, is enough to keep them alive but their metabolism slows down to almost nothing because of the fact that they're cold-blooded and they would come out on these ledges to warm up in the spring and eventually disperse throughout the woodlands but um, again they're supposed to no longer be in this area they're extirpated which means not extinct as a species but extinct from this local area let's review what we've done today i've been in the woods about five hours i got two hours left um, I can hike out in two hours. It's pretty. These trails are pretty easy to hike, and you don't need to go too slow. There's not a lot of stuff to climb up and over. Today's hike started at the west end of this Tillinghast Pond trail system and preserve, and followed the dash trail there, the yellow and black dashing. I got the arrow showing the direction. I did a counterclockwise loop around the Coney Brook Loop. So I did half of that, got on the top half of the White Blaze Trail, which is the Tillinghast Pond Loop, did the top half of that, got on the top half of the Flintlock Loop. I don't know where that name came from, but I saw nothing but dead oak trees. Um, it's certainly worth seeing that trail, um, but I wouldn't want to do it on a hot day, as I mentioned. Then I got on the Blue Blaze Trail, which is actually the Wickaboxit Loop, which is Part of that is in the Wickaboxit MA, which is management area, instead of the Tillinghast Pond management area. Got on that, found an old road that was showing up on the other maps I had that came south to Rattlesnake Ledge. I came in from the north. I got my trail, my, my course plotted in black there. Right below me is supposed to be the blue trail that makes this four-mile loop through the Wickaboxit management area. I didn't do the whole loop. It's not even shown on their map. But I've done part of it, and I'm going to rejoin that blue loop and follow it back to the yellow loop, which is the Coney, um, the uh, Flintlock loop. Do the rest of the Flintlock loop, go west to the south end of Tillinghast Pond, catch the lower half of the Coney Brook loop, and then rejoin the Shepherd Trail, which goes back to the parking area on Hazard Road. I will be adding more videos to this sequence as time allows on the way back but i do, do need to put a few miles behind me as well we'll see what comes along and we will certainly wrap this up on the way back and um look forward to doing more of these ventures in the next six to eight weeks
And we're back on the orange blazed Coney Brook loop. So basically we did the top half of every loop in this park and the bottom half of every loop and some of the crossover trails between the top halves and the bottom laps, halves um, we did not take. I didn't track my distance, but I just estimated it from looking at the map. I'm guessing I did between eight and nine miles by the time I'm back. And um, going to be just about seven hours in the woods, but probably two and a half of that hour time was not walking, but making videos. Um, these are pretty easy trails to hike relative to the other, to the other trails in this part of New England. Most of this land is not that bouldery, it's not that much ledge, and there's not a lot of elevation change. So these, these are nice trails. Um, there are some areas where there's a lot of dead trees, and there are some areas where they have cleared it to create a variety of habitat for different wildlife. So that being said, this is a very interesting park with trails that are easy to follow, well blazed and well mapped. And there's maps at every interchange. Once you get into the Wicaboxic management area over by there, over there by Rattlesnake Ledge, it's more like what I've come to come to expect in this part of uh, Rhode Island and Connecticut. Trails that exist, maps that exist, but there's a little bit of figuring out as you go, and not always a lot of blazing. But for anybody that's used to that type of hiking, you wouldn't have any trouble finding those trails and finding your way around. But we're just about back to that cedar swamp and the boardwalk across Coney Brook. And uh, we're going to put the wraps on today's hike. I've got a few hikes in mind that I want to do this winter in the northeast United States, a little further from this general area. We'll see what Mother Nature allows as far as weather and snowpack and things like that. Uh, hiking up mountains is great, but not when there's three feet of snow on the ground. It's a lot, a lot of extra effort, but there's a lot of low elevation hikes that often don't get deep snow that I have in mind as well. So stay tuned. We'll get back in the woods as soon as we can.